Hey Camp Hulks, thanks for joining me today. We are going to discuss the RV fire extinguisher. Maintenance of it, the care of it, and how it may or may not work for you. So stay tuned. I'm Missy. I'm Mike. And we're, we're the, the Camp Hulks. Camp of Hawks. Today with me I have Charlie Foster. Charlie has a little bit of background in fire safety equipment so I'm gonna let him talk about that. Go ahead, Charlie tell us about your background. I'm a safety specialist for a uh, Florida Water Company and we do some training on fire extinguishers and um, yeah a lot of people take this stuff for granted it's there it's always going to work. But what they don't realize is there is some maintenance to these things. Uh, you have some fire extinguishers like these that come with your with your camper. They have a, a plastic horn and no gauge, so you really can't look at it to see if it's, you know, if it's in the green or if it's not in the green. Uh, <clears throat> so what happens is these plastic ones will leak their propellant. The expansion and contraction of this plastic horn will let the propellant leak out. And what happens, you'll go to use it and it'll be in the green. You'll pull the pin, squeeze it, and you'll have nothing. Uh, when we do our fire extinguisher training at work, we have some people who want to get rid of these old plastic ones and we take them just for our fire extinguisher training. Mm -hmm. And when we go to use them, 90% of them won't work. You'll pull the pin, nothing. You can't put the fire out. Now I took mine off as we're, one of the cool things about camping amongst friends here is campfire talks. And we talked about this uh, the other night while sitting around the campfire discussing the fire extinguishers in the RVs. I took mine out today, I picked it up, and it actually feels quite heavy at the bottom where I have not touched this for the last year. And everything has settled down to the bottom, so I imagine there's a great vapor or air space right at the pop top. If I pop this, I'm going to extinguish all the air out before I actually get to the, uh, the uh, powder, I guess. <clears throat> when you pick these up, it's not a bad idea. Just turn upside down and shake it because they do sit in one position for as long as you leave it there. Uh, what I suggest you look for is a fire extinguisher with a metal horn. And this is the horn part here. This is a metal canister with a metal horn. Whereas if you look at this one, it's a metal canister with a plastic horn. So you got two dissimilar materials mm -hmm. uh, and the expansion and contraction will let that propellant leak out. Also, look at your gauge because it can be in the green, but if it's above the green, it's just as bad as being undercharged. Above the green? Yeah, it, it should be in the green. It should, if it's above it or below it, it's right. still an issue. So uh, there are companies out there who you could take these too if you use them and they'll recharge them they'll check it for you uh, retag it if you need it tagged right uh, but if you use this even just for a second to put out a small fire and it still says it's in the green you still need to get it refilled there's there's uh, chemicals in there get on the seals and uh, it will let the propellant leak out too so the next time you go to use it it won't work correctly either all right so the metal ones you think in your experience can be refilled yes they can okay. we have them refilled all the time we use them for fire extinguisher training at work and then we take them to a company, they refill it, and they'll change the seals out, and they'll tag it, and it's good to go. All right. This one barely says, or is just over the fill line. So I guess that's okay. Do you know your experience? Do you know? It should be fine. As it long as fine. it's not really over, you know, sometimes uh, you'll watch it, and just from being hot and cold, it, it'll move in here a little bit. Sometimes if it's way past that green, I would have it checked yeah. out. Something's not right. Now let's talk about the ABC factor. This one in the RV, mounted to the beside the RV door, is only listed as a BC fire extinguisher. Can you tell them a little bit about that? Uh, ABC fire. So A is anything uh, common combustibles, wood, paper, trash. Uh, we tell people things that when you burn it leaves an ash is an A fire. So wood, you know, B is um, gas, diesel, kerosene, your flammable liquids, and C is electric, electrical fire. Okay. So this would do B and C. Uh, probably would put an A out, but it's not made for an A. It's, it's made for BC fire. So flammable liquids and electrical fires. So based on your experience, how long do you think you would get as far as seconds out of this? Nine seconds, approximately nine seconds. This is a two and a half pound fire extinguisher. Okay. Uh, the small ones like that, I'm not sure because we don't use these. These This is probably a pound. Um, but I would imagine it gives you five, six seconds. Five, six seconds. Wow. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't seem like a long time, but when you're putting a fire out, it, you know, um, it, it, does, it does its job. It should. All right. So when using these fire extinguishers, it's always good to point your your aim is at the base of the fire yes they say pass you're going to pull the pin p aim at the base of the fire squeeze the handle and sweep side to side if you blow this through the top of the fire and you're not aiming it correctly you'll you'll waste it all and you won't even touch the fire won't even put it on 
Um, eight to ten feet away, you want to start. You don't want to be too close because it's propellant. It's, you know, this is a pressurized canister of right. chemicals. It can actually spread a small fire if it's uh, if you're too close to it. All right. Last night we had our, uh, of course, it's cold out here. We used our, uh, of course, fireplace heater, which is a 15,000 BTU heater. Also, we had a small plug-in heater, you know, one of the safety ones that if this over, it, it'll shut off. Uh, however, we talked about, um, at least my wife and I talked about load off of one outlet on those portable heaters, the electric heaters. You're at the campground, you're using their electric instead of your propane, that's fine. But she had it plugged into a multi-outlet running a, a fan also in the bedroom because we sleep with the fan on for the noise. So you could hear the draw in that, so that could probably cause overheating issues with the outlet. So again, that's something else you have to think out. You have any experience, or you want to elaborate? Uh, you on never that? want to overload any any outlet. You know, there's there's two plugs there for a reason. And when you get, you know, we we had the same thing. These campers don't have a whole lot of outlets in them. They don't put put them like they have in your kitchen, where they're every three or four feet. So we do the same thing. We have one. It it's, it has four plugs in it, and you plug it in. Right, but right. really, not a good idea to to plug a heater, especially into anything except the outlet itself. And it should be a GFI outlet as well. Right. As well. Yep. We switched it to the GFI and perform better. Uh, fire safety, just to let you know, this is my fire extinguisher, which I'm now going to switch to a, what, metal? Metal horn. Metal horn. Uh, this was, I, I kept it in my bedroom closet, because I knew this was, if there was a fire in the main body of the RV, my only escape route was out that window. Uh, at least I wanted something close by. Another tip I would suggest is, if you can, sleep with your RV bedroom door shut, because these things will go up quick, unfortunately right yes very they, quick. they will go very up quick so you'll have less time to get out if you're asleep with your rv door open your bedroom door open and the smoke's going to come in there pretty darn quick so in addition to that we put two more fire or two more smoke detectors in my unit yeah you can never have too many you never have too many and check them also your co2 make sure you check your co2 make sure the co2 alarm is still working also i've heard wor words or i've had tips that dog food actually set off the co2 alarm so make, your, make sure your dog's food is set far away from your CO2 alarm, but that's another issue. Anything else on uh, this? Real quick, too, uh, if there is a fire, if you open that camper and it, you know, it's full of smoke, don't go in there. You can replace the camper. Smoke is what's going to kill you, and everything is synthetic anymore. Nothing's made right. out of real material, so that just puts more poison in that smoke. Uh, seven out of ten deaths in fires are from the smoke inhalation, not the fire. So. So just be careful. Make sure it's a small fire if you're going to use a fire extinguisher. Make sure it's not a large fire. And, it, and just be sure that you can put it out before you try to use a fire extinguisher. Right. And always have your back towards the door so you have an escape route when you use a fire extinguisher. You don't want that fire to block your, your uh, escape route. Okay, good tip. All right, let's move on. I'm going to talk about just a little quickly about propane cylinders. Since we're on the fire topic and propane cylinders, or a propane is actually probably going to be your main accelerant, especially when you keep your propane on driving down the road, keep your fridge on. So there is a manufacturer date, which nobody actually covers with you on these propane cylinders when they're supposed to be requalified, not certified, but requalified. So you have, you have an experience with this? No, not really. And, and it's actually, I really didn't know this either until I bought a camper and it had old tanks on it. So oh, yeah? uh, when I took them to get them refilled, they, they said, well, you we can't refill these until you get them requalified. Wow. So, all right. Uh, so this, this one has expiration date of 10 years, which I think is pretty much the industry standard. It says right here on the, uh, the uh, top of this that protects the valve in the event of a rollover, must be requalified within 10 years of manufacture date. And I have a close-up shot I'll show you here later on. But this one, the manufacture date was January of 18. So they do have a 10 year expiration date or requalifying date. If that tank has been requalified, it'll have an E after that date. So once it gets requalified or restamped, repressurized, rechecked, they'll stamp it with an E saying it's been requalified. What the E is for, I don't know. I'll look it up. Maybe I'll, I'll post a link below. All right. Anything else, Charlie, you think of? Uh, yeah, no, just be careful. Like you said, the fire extinguishers, you know, a lot of people take it for granted that they're going to be there and they work, and sometimes they don't. So mm -hmm. uh, do your due diligence when you buy them. A small fire extinguisher like this, I think we get them for about $25. Right. Uh, five pound, which is, you know, got about 14 seconds of extinguishing time, uh, usually around 45 50 bucks. Uh, but look for a good fire extinguisher. There's a lot of good brands out there. I'm not going to name any one over the other, but um, Metal Horn, Metal Canister, very important 
And if you have them at home already and they're and they're fairly old, you can take them and have them uh, recertified and checked out from from a lot of manufacturers who uh, refill them. Cool. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe below. I thank Charlie for coming in, stepping in. Again, these are the people you meet at the campgrounds. Great campfire discussion we had the other night. I said, man, that'll be a great video for the campaholics to share this information, get it out there. Um, I never even thought about it. Again, this little RV fire extinguisher right here has sat beside my door for a year. Never even thought about it. Picked it up, and I could feel again all this weight down here below. So, this probably would not have helped in the event of a fire, especially if I needed it for an escape. But again, always like I said, I kept the bigger one in my bedroom, in my bedroom closet, in case uh, there was an issue where I could not get a good escape route to this one. So. Out the window I go, and that's going to be my last resort. In the bedroom window. All right. Thanks for watching. Hit the button, uh, thumbs up button below if you like what you saw, and we'll see you on the road.